exist, then, well, you're probably going to have a, you know, you, can, you could talk to the browser, steal the cookie, and it would be totally cross-domain and be all great. Turns out it's not quite that simple. Um, because unlike some of the other things like Flash and Java, Acrobat doesn't actually have a nice way of getting back to the browser. Um, I'll go through some of them and, and what does and doesn't work, and I'll explain why. So first of all, you have um, post message. Um, which basically you have to set up handlers in both Acrobat and JavaScript, and then you can talk to each other. Um, you have uh, submit form with the JavaScript URL. Um, unfortunately, that, that doesn't work anymore. It's been patched in, in 9.1, so you can't do that anymore. Uh, and, and I also tested, it's not just submit form, pretty much I couldn't get it to work with any JavaScript, any, any function. Um, uh, and so, so that's, that's kind of out. But the, the other way to get data back into PDF is basically just defining it in the URL. But it's not, really, it's not really what we want, because what we really want is something in Acrobat that can reach out and grab the data from the browser. So um, uh, basically, post message is the only one we can really do that with. Um, so this is basically how you set it up. You set up a message handler. It's defined in bold there. And on message, you do something like grab the cookie or whatever and then you send it back to the PDF. Um, inside the PDF, you have, another, you have a message handler object, and they, then, you, um, then you call this.hostcompainer.postmessage. Um, the problem with this is obviously you need to define some JavaScript in the page that's hosting the PDF, which basically ties that PDF to that page if you're going to do anything useful, so thereby um, removing any sort of advantage you had around you know, just grabbing it and going to a page and, or getting a reference to a window and, and grabbing data out of a window. So that kind of um, pretty much neuters any sort of attack um, towards, directly towards the browser anyway. Um, uh, as I said before, okay, there is this dot submit form, but it's been patched. And if they haven't patched, then, well, you could just, you know, there's plenty of command execution bugs in older versions of Acrobat. So if you're going to attack older Acrobat, you may as well just do command execution. <laughs> So talking to the browser, no, nah, not really so possible. Um, how about key logging? That was what the, um, the Calibero attack was talking about, grabbing focus and, and stealing keys and that sort of thing. Um, again, the, not being able to talk back to the browser, like with, with Java, you've got Live Connect. You can just call stuff as long as you've still got access to a valid window object. Um, PDF, you don't have that. So yeah, pretty much out, fortunately. Um, port scanning, though, is certainly possible. Um, wrote, we were a little uh, PDF port scanner. Uh, we used the soap.connect method, so we were obviously doing it in Acrobat Pro, but you could, it works just the same using um, the XML method I was talked about earlier. Basically, you just attempt a connection based on whether it, uh, it fails or it times out or whatever, whatever the error, error message you get back, then you can decide. If it's, it's a rudimentary way. Would you actually do it? Nah, I don't know. It's not that exciting. Um, so not wanting to leave you with kind of, oh, well, we got here, but we didn't really get anything that awesome. I thought I'd talk a little bit about JavaScript injection, because this is sort of something that came out of um, looking at trying uh, ways to try and uh, uh, send data back and forth from PDFs. And it just there was some really interesting stuff that, um, that you can do um, with uh, a thing called FDF, which is Forms Data Format. Um, so basically, Acrobat has a mechanism for um, submitting and, and loading data um, uh, called form data format. Um, it's, quite, it's pretty much like post for HTTP. You, um, you hit submit and it will send all of the form data encoded in a kind of a semi-binary format. Um, uh, basically, inside that FDF, um, you can specify a target PDF file from, uh, and the data that you want to load into that, tar that target PDF file. The, the point of FDF is basically to pre-populate um, form data. So you could give someone a, a form and it would fill out their, maybe their name and address or something like that for them. Um, but there's no check to ensure that the FDF is loaded um, from the same domain as the PDF. Um, and the other thing is that the target file URL can be a JavaScript URI. And um, I'll just explain how both of these can be, you can do some pretty interesting stuff with that. Um, okay, so, so that's what an FDF file looks like. Um, really basic one, anyway. Um, we have the slash f command, which is specifies the target, which is the PDF to be loaded. And then we have the 
slash after command, which says, okay, after you've loaded the, the PDF, then um, execute this script. What does that mean? Well, it means you can inject script into Adobe's website, or any PDF for that matter. Um, when I found this, I thought, whoa, this is huge. This is a mad vulnerability. Like, I'm going to get mad creds for this. You know, I emailed Adobe. Um, it turns out this isn't actually anything new. This is actually known. It's documented um, in the uh, Adobe website. Um, basically, they have a thing called enhanced security. Um, you, if you enable enhanced security, it prevents FDF injection. Um, but it, it's not enabled by default. Um, oh, okay, so well, you can inject script into a PDF. Big deal. It's not the browser. You don't have the cookie. What? One thing you could possibly do, if you know the exact URL of a PDF, you could steal the contents of that PDF. Um, basically, you send them an FDF file which has the target PDF, some script that gathers the content, and then sends that content off to somewhere else. Um, the, the only thing, in the, when I tried to do this, um, even the XML channel resulted in a warning to the user. Um, it's a fairly cryptic kind of warning. It just says it's trying to connect to a site. Um, uh, if, if it was a site you trusted, you might say yes anyway, so it's not great either way. But um, if there was another channel, for example, if you were able to maybe do it through DNS exfiltration, you could probably get the data out that way maybe. Um, but more of an impact um, is you can actually do XSS um, uh, through a, a multi-stage, basically, attack. Um, so you, basically, because it doesn't check uh, the file or the, there's the F parameter, um, contains JavaScript, or you can use a JavaScript URL there. You can um, use a multi uh, you can you can put in JavaScript now. So if we went back to where was it? So if I put JavaScript in there and I open it up, I'll get JavaScript alert, whatever. Now that's not great in itself because obviously you just open a file, you get JavaScript, you get code executing on wherever you loaded that file. However. If we use a multiple stage attack, um, basically uh, we do XSS. So we, we first of all launch our previous FDF like we did before. We open our victim PDF uh, here. So we, first of all we get our FDF. Then we go and we load our victim PDF. Then we run our code, which submits back to our alert PDF. We get a warning. So Damn, we were so close. We almost had XSS. Um, I don't know. Maybe a user clicks yes. Maybe they click no. But nah, it's not so great. What we really want is no warning, which is possible. Um, one of my colleagues, Alex, noticed that um, if you use a redirect, um, you don't get a warning. So basically, with this attack, um, you load the FDF. Then you load the victim PDF. And then instead of going straight back to your site with a malicious FDF, you bounce yourself off a redirect on their site, and then you get your, your JavaScript, your, your FDF that has the JavaScript in it, and then you win. Um, so the, I guess the implication there is if you have PDF and you have open redirect, you have XSS on your site. Um, not as cool as the FDF bug from a couple of years ago, but still kind of interesting. Um, there's some interesting implications for the ghosting attacks I was talking about. Now, instead of getting someone to load a malicious PDF, we can now inject our malicious script straight into a PDF on any domain. Um, basically, you don't need to find XSS on the domain to have some script running on the domain. So you, you just uh, you, you load up an FDF file. It then injects that script into a PDF, and then you could you can ghost that PDF, and do do exactly the same stuff as I was doing before, but on basically on any domain. Um, which is kind of cool because it, if you're trying to do an attack, um, some of the things you might be able to do is say you want to do an, an, an attack where you, you've got XSS on a site but you don't know when a user's logged in, you can use the persistence to keep yourself running in memory until they have logged in and then you can, then you can trigger the XSS to steal the cookie or something like that. Um, another cool thing about this is it deflects the um, attention away from the, PD, like the bad FDF file because it looks like the PDF that's loaded is the one that's actually causing the problems. Um, although I did notice some limitations with using FDF and the sort of persistent stuff. Basically, um, there was the XML, cha XML channels I just talked about before will, will have a warning, um, whereas in a normal PDF it won't. Um, and also some strange timing behaviors. Um, sometimes it would make requests, sometimes it would queue them up. 
that sort of thing. So it's not quite as, as stable. Um, okay, so to summarize, um, basically it's possible to create a PDF which uh, prevents itself from being unloaded uh, by using infinite loops. Um, you can create a command and control channel um, from that PDF, even cross domain. Um, now, from there, the attacks are somewhat limited in terms of being able to get back to the browser, but there's certainly a lot of other potentials. Um, the fact that you can pop a window is, is pretty useful, especially for someone like advertisers. Um, I, I wouldn't expect this to be used in, in like a typical, uh, I guess, sort of like a, tro uh, a zombie or a botnet type of thing. It's too unstable. It's, um, you know, it, it doesn't last that long. If, if the user notices, they kill the process, that sort of thing. But certainly for um, uh, malicious advertising, you know, you want, you want an ad to stick around and, and get its message out, you know, well, this will do that. So uh, this, this is, there is definitely the potential there. And then obviously, finally, if you've got a PDF and an open redirect, you've got cross-site scripting. Um, what do we do about it? Well, if you're a plugin developer, um, you need to consider timing and loop attacks when designing plugin architecture. I didn't actually see an, uh, any issues in plugins with the timer mechanisms. Um, that's what the, the Calibera attack was, was a um, set timeout um, issue, but uh, that wasn't the case in, in any of the plugins I tested, but certainly the loop attacks are. Um, content shouldn't be allowed to um, consume resources after the parent window is closed. Um, and you need to deal with the problem of runaway scripts. So you, and you've seen this a lot in browsers, like the most recent um, browsers. They've got execution watchdogs to stop scripts um, uh, just from going on as long as they like. Um, for the end users, um, fix any open redirects. Um, any domain that has open redirects and PDFs has XSS, as I said. Um, this isn't related to, to Acrobat, but certainly if you haven't already update to the Java 2 plugin, um, because it completely prevents this sort of attack, um, it, it all cleans itself up nicely after the page is closed. Um, certainly strongly recommend that you harden your Acrobat um, installation. Disable Acrobat JavaScript if you don't need it. If you're just using it to view PDFs, maybe you don't need JavaScript enabled. Um, certainly um, uh, the enhanced security mode, uh, it's, Strongly recommend turning that on um, because it prevents it completely prevents the FDF injection. Um, you can also block access to the internet from PDFs, so you can stop PDFs from talking out to the internet. That's an op a security option within Reader. That's certainly another thing I'd recommend. And um, another thing you can do, which it kind of mitigates the attack somewhat, is basically set uh, Acrobat to open um, PDFs in a separate window. Instead of opening them within the browser, you can force it to download and, and open within the browser. And it doesn't prevent the attack completely, but um, a lot of the attacks that I was trying, they didn't work really within Reader because you, you get a lot more warnings when you're, when you're in Reader. If it tries to make any connection to the internet, you get a warning. Um, so, you know, if you're just using it to view PDFs, um, there, there's no real read. There's no real need to have the, the PDF in, embedded in the page, I don't think, anyway, that's my personal opinion. But it's another thing you can do to reduce the likelihood. And that's, uh, that's all of the talk. Has anyone got any questions? Yes? Uh, no, I, this is all Windows. I've only, I've only played with it on Windows. Anyone else? Yep. Yeah? Ten. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying before. So the, the, the JavaScript inside the PDF is separate JavaScript engine, doesn't have access to DOM objects or anything like that. It's completely separate. You used to be able to do with um, uh, the form.submit or any other function that could take a URL, you could put a JavaScript URL in there and then you could get some JavaScript running. You still don't have access directly, but you can do things like, you know, you can send some script that then maybe makes an iframe and then makes a request or, or something tricky like that. But yeah, you can't do that anymore. But you can, as I say, you can do it with the FDF. So yeah. Uh, did you report it to Adobe? And secondly, is there any difference between browsers which are using ActiveX type plugins and NP API? Um, I don't know. I, I, it's, yes, I did report to Adobe, and their response was uh, enable the enhanced security, which is, yeah, it works. You enable the enhanced security, it prevents that. Um, 
I've tried this in both ActiveX and...